Amen. Amen. Were it not for grace. Talking about motivation to share your faith. Motivation to share your faith. Part two, we're living in the time of trouble in the last days, and at the same time, Jesus told us we're living in the time of the plentiful harvest. Plentiful, the folk need to be saved. And he says, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send more workers. And then he says, go, go, go beyond the walls of the church. Go, go. Go beyond the walls of your family. Go, 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 go. Talk about motivation to share your faith. And, and then he died, but he didn't stay dead. James, I love that. <laughs> and he says, I'm the firstborn from the dead. That means there's a secondborn and a thirdborn. And somewhere we're in that number. Talking about motivation to share your faith. Let's pray. Father, thank you. You are the motivation. You are. You dying. You dying eternally and, and yet not staying dead. Rose again. That's our motivation. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11 Verse 26, for often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, what's the personal pronoun? You, right? So this is personal. You. You. Not the pastor, not just the elder, but you do what? Proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Remember the Lord's Supper, what we celebrate here, causes us to look back at his sacrificial death, at the same time, we look forward to his resurrection, look forward to his appearing. And see, this is the motivation that will transform your life. Remember Saul, brilliant, brilliant Pharisee, on his way to jack up more believers. Remember that? He had his orders on the road to Damascus. Brother was serious, wasn't he? He was serious. He'd jack you up in a second if he knew you were a believer. Then he met Jesus, and it was, what, what, what helped transform his life, his life, where he became Paul? Wasn't it the death and resurrection? His death and resurrection. And so Paul describes this Proclaiming the Lord's death with two adjectives and two nouns. Two adjectives and two nouns. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We'll look at the adjective. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. You see, see, this is personal. You see, right? You see at just the right time. See, God may not be there when you want him, but it's always the right time. It took me a while to believe that. Because remember, I, sometimes we think God is late, God is slow, right? Remember the slow-acting God. That we think God acts like Heinz ketchup. No. He's always on time. You see. I like that. You have to see that in your life. Right now, stuff ain't going right, but you have to see at just the right time. You've got to hang in there. You see that just at the right time, what happened? When we were still what? Powerless. Powerless. Anybody feeling powerless? That's okay. The truth is we cannot save ourselves. Isn't that the message that Jesus told Nicodemus? 
We were powerless. We were powerless. John chapter 3. Jesus says, unless you are born again, born of water and spirit, you know, the word of God and, and the spirit of God, that's the good news. See, that's motivation to share our faith with folk are out there. They can be saved. They don't have to remain powerless. They don't have to remain powerless. The second adjective, the second adjective. You see, just at the right time, when we were still sinners, when we were still powerless, Christ died for who? We were ungodly. Mercy. Being ungodly is not being like God. Being ungodly is not living like God. Plenty of folk are making bank on being ungodly. Isn't that true? Making bank. You ever get tempted? Come on now, shame the devil and tell the truth. But the truth is, Revelation 1.18 for the wrath of God is a God of love, but don't mess with the wrath of God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against how much, how much ungodliness? All ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men, men, anthropos, humanity, who what? So suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In the last days, we see so many folk suppressing truth. Don't even think much of it. Suppress truth. Lies of commission, just false statements. Elected officials, some, some, right? People, some, some, what about you? Will look you in the face and lie like the devil. Serious. Don't even sweat. Cool as a cucumber. And lie. So we're talking about suppressing truth. Lies of omission. You know, misleading, leaving out the facts. And then blame me. Well, you didn't ask me, and I didn't tell you. We blame the other person. But God says, for my thoughts are not like your thoughts. Your ways are not like my ways, just as the heavens... Higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Think about it. The rain, the rain, the rain goes down, but it has impact. Rain and snow fall from the sky and don't return without watering the ground. They cause plants to sprout and grow, making seed for the farmer and bread for the people. And the same thing is true of the word that goes forth. We got to hold on to God's word. God, word. Have you found God's word to be true? Just at the right time. May not be on your time. May not be on my time, but God's word is true. Talking about motivation to share our faith beyond the walls of the church. Now a noun, powerful noun. Romans 5, verse 10 says, For if while we were God's what? Wow, think about it. Do you remember when you were an enemy of God? Hmm, scriptures identify a variety of of enemies of God. All through Israel's history, we read about God's enemies, right? The Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Canaanites, the Philistines, just a few who oppress people who became God's enemies. Doesn't the Bible identify Lucifer as the enemy of God? But here, Paul says, we were enemies of God. Remember your B.C. days before Christ? Doing your own thing? Hmm. But the good news is we can share our faith that we don't have to remain an enemy of God's. Romans 5.10 says, for while we were God's enemies, we were what? Reconciled to him 
through the, through, through the death of his son, and how much more, I love that phrase, much more. See, whatever Satan is do, God can do much more. Whatever your struggle is, God can bless much more, much more, much more, much more. You just got to hang in there. Much more. We just learned that, that, that truth during Sabbath school lesson. The reward of what? Faithfulness. God does much more. He uses one more descriptive noun to let us know where we were. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this time Why we were still what? Wow. We were so, all, all of us have fallen short, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin has a price tag. It kills us, and, and we all fall short of God's glory. We want to do our own glory. Think about our own stuff. Uh, but the good news is we don't have to remain sinners. That's our motivation to take our faith beyond the walls of the church. Because, it, But God demonstrates his own love. Demonstrates. What does demonstrate? Doesn't it demonstrate to, to reveal, to manifest, to show? That's what God did. Talking about motivation to share our faith beyond the walls of the church. See, while we were powerless, Jesus died. While we were ungodly, Jesus died. While we were enemies of God, he died. While we were sinners, he died. While we, we would get on the internet and not even thinking about God, he died. While we weren't studying about God, God was thinking about us. Think about that. What manner of man is this? That he would give his life when we were in opposition, when we were rejecting the law of God, rejecting the love of God, that's when he did it. When you don't have time for God, he's right there. We wonder where God is. He's right there. He's right there. He demonstrated his love. That's what this table represents. See, Jesus got hurt. We talk about his death. But Jesus got hurt. Matthew 26, 37, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be what? He got hurt, deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is what? Exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Jesus experienced excruciating physical and emotional Pain. He approaches the cross and he, he began to become sorrowful and troubled. He experienced grief, anxiety, sadness so intense, so intense, it almost took his life. Think about it when we partake. Talk about motivation to share our faith. Jesus got hurt. Luke 2, 43 says, Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, being in what? He prayed more earnestly than sweat. Hmm. Became like great drops of blood. In Gethsemane, the pain would have been unbearable. You say, you and I say we can't make it unless he was strengthened. His perspiration appeared as drops of blood that thumped to the ground. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life. He gave his life. They didn't take his life. He gave his life. He experienced the second death, the price he paid the price for sin, for our sin, for the sins of the world. He bore it. He bore it on himself. Paul told the Corinthians, for he who made, for he, 
for he made him who knew no sin for us. Somebody say for us. For us. That we might become the righteousness. Christ experienced the second death for us. He assumed responsibility for us. He received our sin. He received our punishment. He received our penalty for us. So us can be motivated to share our faith. No, serious. What more motivation do you need? For us. And about that ninth hour, Jesus cried. I said, Jesus cried out. What were the angels doing? What were the angels doing when they saw their commander in chief hung there? There was never a time that God was not. Until, <laughs> until, Eli, Eli, Alama, Sabak, and I, my God, my God, why? Don't we ask that? Have you forsaken me? He experienced the anguish of separation from his father. And there's no reincarnation, no purgatory. Jesus felt the eternal abandonment. He felt what sinners would feel. The anguish of his soul had a spiritual component. He felt the rejection so that you and I don't have to. This is the motivation for us to share our faith beyond the walls of the church, the second death. But you know what? The motivation doesn't stop with his death. Remember, he told the angel at Smyrna, right? These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. That's the good news of the story here. We don't end. Death does not have the final say in your life anymore. And it doesn't have to have the final say to those who are powerless, to those who are ungodly, those who are enemies of God, to those who are sinners. It does not have to have the final say if you just share your faith beyond the walls. See, the, my Bible tells me the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that will quicken and move your mortal body right here, right now. Talking about sharing your faith beyond the walls of the church. Motivation to share your faith beyond the walls of the church. I want to thank Sister Carrie Ann for collaborating with me with what you see in your hand. She created it, and we worked together on some of the ways. See, when we talk about faith beyond walls, it's not a theme. Amen, Pastor. It, 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 it's, 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 it's an adjective, it's, it's action, but it's a noun, it's what we do. I want to make sure everyone gets one. The harvest is ready. The harvest is plentiful.
if there's ever a time we needed the Lord, we sure do need him now. If there's ever a time we need to share our faith, we sure do need to share it now. What do you say? Uh-oh. Some of y'all need to take two of these. Serious, I'm, I'm not laughing. As bad as this earth is, has everyone received one? Practical, practical ways to share your faith. God knows you're busy, but that's why he's equipped you with the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that will help you speak. The same power. The same power. Not a substitute power. Jesus will just look at you. You tell him that. I got up from the dead. And I can get you up from your uh, lethargy. So you see here, I just want you to meditate on this as we get ready to partake of the communion. Because, see, we partake of this Lord's Supper so that we can share our faith beyond the walls of the church. Can I get an amen from someone? That's why we're doing this table today. That's why. So that after this, we feel empowered and clean so that we will share our faith. I don't know somebody on your job, somebody in your neighborhood, somebody where you, uh, that physical activity, somebody where you eat. I, I don't know. We're looking for a needle of the, in a haystack, but that's why the Holy Spirit gets moving. And he will direct you. He will equip you. You just got to spend some time with Jesus. So take note. I'm not going to read what's on here. We're going to be passing this out again. But just some ideas, the first side. Just some ideas. Now, obviously, if there's more ideas, just write them down on how you can share your faith. We're going to be sharing a little bit going forward during our Garden of Prayer, some testimonies on how people are experiencing sharing their faith. Seventh-day Adventist church from its origins and its roots was a movement. I don't think you heard me. Our core, a core of what it was, we, we fought for a while to, to get buildings because we were concerned we'd get so caught up in keeping the building, we would forget about doing the movement. And I'm wondering, are we at there? Do you feel like you're part of a movement? Or you just come to church, sit in the pew and go home? Or you just stay at home and wake up whenever you wake up? Are you are going to be involved in the movement? Outpouring of the latter rain. So we can move. So that we can share our faith beyond the walls of the church. It's not a concept. This is not just a church theme. This is who we should be. This is who we should be. Not just vegetarians or vegans. That's nice. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said, hey, hallelujah. But if you ain't moving, okay. For as often, for as often, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Proclaiming the Lord's death until he returns. Father, thank you. Thank you. All I can say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen.